Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. We're going to work on the Western Friend project today. I've got a pull request in progress and the checks are failing currently. The coverage is the last remaining check as far as I'm aware that we'll need to resolve. I believe the pull request is pretty much complete. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of testing this week to see if there's some things that I just completely forgot about. I have to do the donation button, but I'm going to do that in a separate effort. This is a huge pull request as it is. <laughs> so it looks like most places the Delta's unchanged actually. The cart dropped a bit, but that's, uh, I think, we'll take a look at it. 94% is pretty good. 15 more, so let's go ahead and check it on CodeCov. And the views was one spot uh, for both the PayPal and the orders. So let's go ahead and uh, work on those. Those are pretty critical views. The model, I think, did have some some uh, important code that needs to be covered. So here we are in the PayPal views. We'll hop over there on CodeCove. It's the same thing here. PayPal views. Okay, so we got it twice. So the create PayPal order. We're not testing that the body is parsed. or that we're able to get an order. This is Django. So I'm not sure if I need to use a test there. I think if we write a test that involves this body JSON, Those should be covered. And uh, this is already under test. Let's take uh, covers. Let's see what just the code. Successful PayPal order creation, a failure. So to write a test suite for the create PayPal order view, you'll need to consider several scenarios. A, su a successful PayPal order creation, a failure, during PayPal order creation, which returns a 500 status code. The absence of a corresponding order object that matches the WF order ID. Here's how to write these tests. So we got our dependency, create PayPal order test. We will create a client. I think I have an order factory. We'll get the reverse URL for this view. And it looks like it's essentially Creating a side effect here that will raise an exception and can be anything client. This, I believe, we can just use our order factory. And we will get the reverse. Create PayPal order. I'm not sure that that is correct, but let's see. Let me close out what we're not using here. So create capture. No, oh, no, no, no. It's this one. Create PayPal order. URL is called create PayPal order. Yes, correct. All right. Now we need to import JSON. And this is PayPal view. It's nice that it offers these comments to show me what lines I need to pay attention to. Mock patch, HTTP status. 
for this reason that I'm having to scroll horizontally so much, I prefer like the um, just trailing commas places. And when I'm viewing uh, code on GitHub, it's the same thing. It's just a lot of horizontal scrolling. I don't like those popovers. It's more lines of code, but easier to review and read scrolling vertic it's interesting it was inconsistent it had http status here but it's not using the statuses here so let's fix that Just using the, the literal status code internal server error it gives me a little bit more information 404 all right so i think we're good let's run it okay so to run it we'll need to go to the Terminal, make sure the development, make sure the development database is running. We'll keep the database so it doesn't take as long to run the test. Okay, four and four, four is not the same as created. Fact 404 is happening more often than we expected. Might be that this is not being saved to the database. Let's try this first one. I think it's because I'm using the factory and not saving it. So I'll mention that I'm using the IS of create. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so just call the save. Order. Save. All right, let's give it a try. Hmm. The order object. The debug output indicates that the order object is being correctly saved to the database and can be fetched within the setup method of the test. This makes it less likely that the issue lies with the order factory or the setup method. Given that the view is still returning a 404, the problem could be in how the view is fetching the order object based on WF order ID. Make sure that the WF order ID you are sending the test payload matches the order object created in the setup method to debug further you can print the received wf order id in the view function and check if it matches the order id printed in the test in your view function you can add the following print statement so this is really cool it's helping me like step through probably found a bug in my code and um, the test has flushed it out so in the view function just once we parse the body json We'll call this again. Run the test again to see if the received WF order ID matches the printed order IDs. If they don't match, the problem likely lies in how the test is sending the WF order ID or how the view is parsing it. Okay, I think my client JavaScript is going to make a GET request. Let me check this real quick. So, order create just essentially. gets the cart out of the context and first renders a uh, form showing you the cart and the order details form which is essentially to collect your address then you submit that form Oh. validates it, it saves the order and related items there's a relationship but they're in separate tables then redirects us to the payment process books order with a keyword argument order id so that's one thing where i'm misaligned this redirect does not come in as a post so i have to remove this proxy oh wait 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 it's 
sure. So we're going to be now over to the payment process books order payment. It simply renders this in the template. We process the payment. We call the order create URL, which is here. So this is after PayPal on the create order. So the, we, the user comes back from PayPal. We fetch the order create URL post. We do pass in WF order ID in the body. So that's correct. Uh, the thing is we're just not getting any print. We're not getting any printout. Respawn. Okay. This popovers are fairly obnoxious. The URL is a reversed object. Mm, subtle. <laughs> yeah, where did that import come from? Oh, there wasn't. It was a built-in. Built-in. Okay. Mistake. All right. Yeah, and now the reverse is wrong because I didn't give it the namespace. So coming back down to the setup function. Ah, the test passes. Okay, so very interesting. The error was in using the wrong approach to getting the views URL. I used a built-in reversed method instead of the Django reverse, which will get a URL given a name of a view namespace and a view name easy mistake and you can see how essentially gpt and probably copilot for that matter can help us step through some complicated debugging issues to land on a solution all right so let's just run all of those Great, all three tests pass. And I'll just clean up my prints and we will commit these. Hopefully that'll get our coverage to go green on this view function. We don't have to test every line in it. We just test the key scenarios there. So what did we add here? Now we we should require posts on this. We are sending a post request. So that was a good change to make previously. Now, we need to test this view function. Let's write a test suite for the following view function. I'll be right back. It's worth mentioning or considering that the test that ChatGPT initially wrote last time probably would have run correctly the first time with out my modifications. I of course need to manage the imports and the reverse is correct to get the reverse for the view, the actual URL for the view name. I just used the wrong function last time. So here I'm only managing the imports and this needs to be PayPal. I need to get the namespace of the app. Collapse that for now. Fix this import. Clean up the comments. And now we can run it. The name is capture PayPal order test gen. We have the create order PayPal test and capture. All right, so this is my error. Look at my URLs here, capture PayPal or Yeah, namespace. Okay, we're gonna run the test, basically unmodified, just uh, getting the correct URL and imports. The test run successfully. Okay, so ChatGPT produced successful tests. Full. I will use trailing commas. How can I disable popovers? We just go. There's too many of those. Maybe that. So when I do want them, maybe I can hold a modifier or something. If my mouse is going over something, it doesn't mean I necessarily want to inspect it. There should be a delay. Commander space, control shift space. That's not too bad, yeah. All right. 
it. Yes. And finally, this test. Let's write test suite for the following. With the, now that, yeah, see, that's unfortunate. Everything is. Brain tree shouldn't be in the project anymore. I'll look at that. Mm, that should be gone. Mm. PayPal tests a user in there. Oh uh, yeah. So the reverse match is incorrect. Settings there. Link PayPal subscription, but it's so that was a good guess. I've namespaced it. These are the ones that just get in my way oftentimes. Like that, I don't want that, those. They're just all over the place. See now it's like right in my way. I'm wanting to click the text below it. See, I'm wanting to go up here now. These things keep popping up. Format did not allow redirect 302. So this one was 307. Let's see if this is 302. Created. 302 is created. Hmm. I see a problem. There we go. Oh. Now it's working. So we decided to add the login inside of the non-post request for some reason. Let me just run it one more time. And remove types brain tree. All right, let's push these changes up. That should um, pretty much cover PayPal views. We'll just hop back over here though. Order views was at almost 90%, now it's at 40. So let's go to the order views, handle PayPal order. PayPal error function, you'll want to consider the following scenarios. The function should add an error message to the form. The function should render the expected template. The function should include the expected context variables. Here's a sample test suite for the handle PayPal error. Handle PayPal error test, we got a setup. I'm just going to create a dummy request. Instantiates a form, a cart, and the error message. That's so that these can be passed into the context. And essentially, it's just one function. And we're going to inspect the um, response from the handle PayPal error function. So it's one. Uh, we're checking the errors that it contains the expected messages, the form errors, it's response status code. We should, do, we should use HTTP status only. I'll fix that. So that seems fairly straightforward. So this is under the orders test. All right, we'll have to set up our imports. We'll use HTTP status. We'll run this specific test suite. All right, the cart needs the request. That's the first argument. That's because the cart pulls its um, items from the, the request state, basically, the session. Oh, okay. This is a problem. The session on a generic HTTP request uh, doesn't exist, so we need we need a session, a request with a session on there. So I had to modify the setup so that the cart could get it could be instantiated, get the request, but the request doesn't have a session. I think we're just going to create a session here, like self request session, okay, or request factory. Interesting. 
and we've used that here already and we can just make a request to the root that way it'll have a ah then we set this session to an empty dictionary then I'll just move that here so we kind of see that all that was done all of that was necessary so the cart has a request the cart and request was this session let me so remember that later hmm order create form has no attribute clean data and this is deep inside of the forms Django for clean data the order create form object So it looks like we might not be instantiating that right. Only after, so the clean data attribute is available on a Django form instance only after the form has been validated, calling it its, its valid method. Okay. If you're directly, directly creating a form instance in your test without validating it, clean data won't be available. Here are a couple of ways. So you can just say self form is valid. We'll just call that right in the setup method. And I'll say we need the uh, Hey Dota, how you doing? Testing's going good. Making progress. A lot of help from GPT. <laughs> These are not UI tests. These are view functions. Essentially, all of the views are returning forms and templates, rendering templates. I'm not quite checking the uh, template contents. You could call that, you know, the UI. Just checking kind of the state. Uh, and, uh, oh, why did I not save that? Okay, wait a minute. Hmm. Yeah, because we're not actually validating the test. So <laughs> that might just be all we need to do. You know, do most testing besides UI tests. <laughs> yeah, the UI tests can get pretty tricky. I'm like a bit avoiding them here, <laughs> even though it's kind of templates. You know, just HTML, but especially once JavaScript gets involved, like rendering a PayPal button or something like that, having to wait for everything to load. All right, so just E2E tests. That's something we're investigating more at work as well. We have these, uh, like a service oriented architecture, or sort of microservices, I guess, almost. So our E2E tests are very complicated. We don't have a lot of code, confidence in the code. False is not true. Okay. So now we have at least a new error. Oops. So this could be, all right, let's see what ChatGPT says. The test is failing because self form has error and none is returning false. Meaning uh, no non field error has been added to the form. Your test is based on the assumption that calling handle PayPal error will add a non field error to the form. You might want to debug the handle PayPal error function to ensure it's actually adding the error as expected. That's an interesting point. Ah, so we'll debug print this in the uh, response. Now, self form won't have the, the response form should have it. That's kind of weird. Is this reference? Uh, it does pop ups. This reference to form. Yeah, this is a very simple. Um, handler inside of a view function that basically when I'm communicating with PayPal, where is this even used? I might just be able to is this not even used. It's got to be used somewhere. Yeah. 
Okay, it's actually not used anywhere. <laughs> That's weird. I can't remember why I had this originally. I think I was expecting to do more server side than I ended up doing with PayPal. So actually we don't even need this function. I hope. Yeah, I remember you're giving me a little bit more information about the TDD approach. I'm, I'm still considering it. Yeah, the function was basically uh, to handle PayPal error and send it back to the user when I was doing more on the server with PayPal. But now it's strictly client side, so any pay well, yeah. But the test, I mean, the HTTP request response pattern is just like you know pretty simple. Like those objects are fairly predictable, and so yeah, writing tests against properties of those. Is not too bad. I don't like having to do this. <laughs> this is annoying. All these. But in any case, type ignore everything. I'm going to get down to here. So we actually don't need this test suite. It means less code to maintain, less tests to write. Let me just run my tests again for the whole orders. A service layer and it kind of takes in those things and then calls a separate method on another class that takes the primitive type inputs. Yeah, that's sort of how the, um, what we're doing in my day job as well. We, the primitives would be either, well, it depends on which layer it's coming in from, but could be database objects or sometimes gRPC responses or internal API responses. And on one end of the edge of the service layer and on the other edges are, you know, usually public facing API. <laughs> so yeah, we're kind of mapping between those primitives. Okay, one failure though. Darn it. Two is not three. Right. Let's go ahead and fix this. I think we'll have to do this anyway. Tests, order, create, view, post, request form valid, huh? So orders, tests. Find that one first. Two hundred. It's not three hundred two. So it's supposed to. Take a mock order form. Yeah, and when you create. the order, it'll redirect you to the payment. What was the 302 again? Yeah, ah, I see if it says found. Even though it's a redirect, I don't understand it, but all right, found something and it's saying go to that. Wouldn't have gotten today where I am today in unit testing without coaching help. Yeah, that's a good point. I haven't had a lot of coaching help at work, at least. I'm kind of just using GPT as a coach. All right, so I need to actually give GPT some more information here. We'll check the redirect logic. Here's the test. We're mocking to simulate the form validation and saving and then sending a post request to the view. Here's the main points are test checks. If the form is valid, the response should be a redirect 302, which is status found. The redirect URL should be what you expect it to be. Your test expects a 302 redirect, which is in line with what you described. If this test is failing with an HTTP 200 instead, it implies that the view is not redirecting as expected when the form is valid. Okay. If the test is failing at the self-assert equal response status code, HTTPS P status found line, then you 
need to debug the view logic to see why it's not redirecting. Okay. So order create view post request form valid. My gosh. Order create view. Request post. Form is valid. Creates the items. Redirects. This can be cleaned up now. Hmm. Looks legit. Looks like we're redirecting there. Your view function appears to be well structured for handling an order creation with a post request. If the form is valid, it should redirect to the payment process books to order payment URL with the order ID keyword as the argument. Given that your test is expecting a 302 HTTP status found, but is receiving a 200, something seems off. Here are some things to look at. Form validation. Make sure the mock form in your test is correctly set to be valid. The isValid method should return true. Mock form. IsValid return true. Make sure the cart object is in the expected state. If it's empty or invalid, that might affect the flow. Hmm. Yeah. But it should it should just the mock form. Am I patching the right thing? Have I tried katas? Uh, code katas? I have not. I've thought about them like in a couple of contexts, like the sort of um, what's the one called? Uh, the Festivus of Code or whatever it's called. Right, I, this is what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm, so here's the mock form. Is valid returns true? You could add print statements in the view or use a debugger. To, I can't really debug this view right now, so I have to add print. Use print debugging, unfortunately. Let's start with that. So in the view form is not valid. Uh, that's the problem. Even though I'm setting it to is valid, so it's like the mock is not correct. What I could do though is um, ensure that your mock is actually being used by the view. You could print form is valid in the test just before making the post request to verify returns true. Just before making the post request. In your view, print out the form errors when it's not valid. We'll rerun. Yeah, that kind of makes sense though, that uh, going from like the katas and these sort of, uh, it's sort of like learning to pass tests in school. It doesn't quite prepare you for like life or the things you'll encounter. Okay, so a bunch of form validation problems, but uh, that was a bit of noise. Uh, or for example, whiteboard interviews where you know you have like lead code expectations in an interview it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be handling those types of scenarios and often those type of leap code exercises are used to thin people out or okay so the in the view the form is not valid but in the test the the mock is valid valid right. so yeah I'm mocking you wrong that's the wrong that's the point but I guess they can help you learn to tackle a problem like how to kind of, there we go. Troubleshoot, how to think systematically, how to be goal oriented. All right. I think it's mocking the object in the form library and not the view. If the form is valid in the test, but not in the view, it suggests that the mock isn't being used in the views as you expect. This could be because the mock isn't, isn't being applied to the right object. So I believe is the case. Or because the view is creating an instance of the form in a way that bypasses the mock. You can try to patch the form directly in the views module, ensuring that the mock applies to the actual form object of, that the view uses. All right. Yeah, I see I'm in the orders. So it would be orders, views. Maybe that'll be all that's needed. I'm still a bit confused by the mocking, but that was the problem. Yeah. So I was mocking the form in the module where it was defined and not in the view where it's being used. Subtle distinction. But yeah, so you can see ChatGPT is definitely my mentor here. Have you tried ChatGPT with uh, any code katas or anything like that? Seeing if it can help figure those out. Let's see, what, what are some good code katas? Code kata is just specifically this one. And they're language agnostic. This kata arose from discussions we've been having with some meetings. Ah, DFW, what's DFW? 
Dreyfus friends. Yeah, it sounds like a good philosophy though. And I'm very interested in this idea of incremental improvement in small ways through daily practice. So that makes sense to caught in breaking it down as a daily for daily improvement. Let's see. Clean up and the orders. I did a bunch of those typing noirs. We'll commit these, we'll push and we'll check the CI to see what's the status here. What's our progress? This handle PayPal error we've removed. So that was good. I hope it's just crufty code, but I believe that's gonna put our subscription model. Let's see here. I think there was a significant test case here. Yeah, this is active property. All right, let's go ahead and do this while we're here. So we'll go to the subscription views for the model, and I'll go ahead and paste in the model. The subscription model has this da 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 is active property. So we'll use the expiration date and the PayPal ID, and basically we'll mock the PayPal call. And I don't need to pollute the conversation with the user definition. All right, so what? Uh, add a test covers the is active property method. Now, I don't know if I've got an is active here. Do not. Oh, wow. So certainly to test the is active property, you should aim to cover these scenarios. When the PayPal subscription ID is present and the PayPal subscription is active, when it's present and the PayPal is not active, PayPal is present, but expiration date is in the future, is not present, but expiration date is in the future and PayPal subscription is not present and expiration date is in the past when neither are present or available. <laughs> uh, that's basically saying if PayPal is managing the subscription, we'll just defer to what PayPal says. If PayPal is not managing it, then we can have this just arbitrary expiration date so that we can have the control to give people subscriptions and perhaps uh, Perpetual subscriptions. I'll have to think about that. No, I think we should have to set an expiration date. Yeah, so here's the test suite and it'll mock is active subscription app. Now, this is the question is it? I think, yeah, if we just give, um, if we just create a subscription with no expiration date, it's perpetually active. And I just remembered uh, this PayPal function lets you kind of create a, a pay uh, subscription by create, sending a post request, but it'll have the PayPal ID associated with it, even if it's not active. Hmm. Or even, yeah, so even if there is no existing PayPal ID, so I think we're fine here. I think, I think, uh, we should default to false them. Yeah, that's my intuition for safety. When in doubt, just go with the safe assumption. We'll just run the whole suite and keep DB. I think my import's wrong here. So this should come from Django utils import times uh, time zone, which has now. Okay. All right. And if, yeah, this just having the expiration date means that if you want to create a, a free subscription or, or whatever, you just have to every so often manually bump that subscription expiration date. You know, you could create it for the expiration date for 10 years from now. So that's not so bad. That's a good compromise. Yep. And we're handling it's not none. Yeah. Okay. We'll sync these. And I think we're pretty much done with this pull request. This is a big, deal i'll need to set up some environment variables but i think we'll finally be in the green here maybe i didn't notice before what failed static code coverage i will merge this with these 
orders test. Well, here I am in the wait, orders. All right, PayPal test. And they're just kind of duplicates. Right. Clean up. But the code cove is still failing. Waiting for CI. Code wars. Awesome katas. Oh, okay, there's a bunch of them. Closure katas. Dave Thomas's code kata. Sensio Labs. TDD katas. Ah, this is interesting. String some kata. Whoa. Hands on test driven development katas for C sharp. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I think then this is like a CLI thing maybe that runs. I seem to remember something like that. Code katas are not quizzes or puzzles. Okay. You should not only try to solve it, but find a very good solution following best practices in the programming language you are using. Okay, that takes them a little bit out of the realm of like leet code and more into, towards like um, real code, jumping to real towards real code, where you're you're thinking about problems, you're thinking about solutions, you're comparing possible solution and trying to find out a good one given the trade-offs. All right, I like this Kata's curated list. And I guess they're language agnostic, but it would be cool to find some Python code Kata's, but they're really easy Python Kata's. Oh, Code Wars, but this is a commercial site, I think, yeah. Okay, we got our CI back. Tests failed, good. We have something concrete in magazine. Okay. Oh yes, this is right. I didn't look at these magazine tests at all. Yeah. But this is the crucial area of the site where we use the um, is active. So yeah, I've got to make these make sure these pass. Okay. One. Isn't it expires? I think so. Let's double check. Expiration date. This way we avoid the whole uh, needing to mock a PayPal response. And I should have just run this single one, but okay. Error. A couple of errors. Okay. Mm. This should be a date though. So what would be a better solution here? Date today. Okay, so I modified it to date today. And chat GPT says, yes, the code you've shown for creating a testing subscription looks correct. Yep, the tests pass. Okay, good. What I'll do is just run everything. Let's see what we get. I think we're pretty close to getting at least tests to be green. That doesn't mean they're all meaningful, of course. Or the, that I'm covering all the things. I know I'm gonna have some work to do after this pull request is merged. Um, continuation work with the donations, setting up the environmental environment variables for PayPal, for testing, more manual testing. I should document though the, the PayPal variables and take a quick look at these cons. Push those. Looks like 248 tests ran. Everything is okay. Check my PayPal constant. So yeah, this PayPal API URL will move to setting. I think everything else is good. I'm gonna go conf import settings and then we'll move that to our core settings. I don't know, can you have per app settings? So I can set the PayPal API URL based on the PayPal client environment. But do I want it to default to the live URL? No, uh, I think this is going to be in my docs. I'm trying to remember what the other PayPal lower. Yeah, it's a function. I'm going to default to the sandbox. Oops. And only if I explicitly set it to production. Yeah. Unless the 
credentials wouldn't work if I get the environments mixed up. All right. I think we're ready to roll. Wait for CI to finish. Still have not gotten a green light from the previous run. Code Cove, 83. Cart pie dropped a little bit. Everything else is pretty solid. Ah, uh, but 15 more, yeah, 15 more. Hmm. Or just show me the patch, what's bad? Show me the bad, wait. Confused about that. It dropped three. So head must be patches what I'm applying. Oh the code though that I've committed is fully covered. Alright. But the uh, main branch. I never did do that. But yeah, these have been uncovered for a while, so I don't see why code cove is blocking here. I'm not going to let this PR hinge on the coverage of delta of minus 0.47%. That's not cool. So head is my commit and it's gone down by a fraction of a The thing is, the tests are still failing. Oh, forgot my... Fix it there, fix it there. So in a way, Though I'm kind of working alone on this project, I have some collaborators here. I've got ChatGPT is like my pair programmer, sometimes mentor, more often than not mentor, teaching me like quite a lot of nuanced uh, details about Django and test frameworks and things like that. It's, yeah, very helpful, immensely helpful. Then I've got these other little code climate bot and uh, Code QL, kind of offering a little bit of low level peer review, yeah, but looking out for bugs and code smells. So yeah, you can, helps you make, make a solo dev a little bit more effective, I guess. Granted, we've had several contributors to this project as well. So that's always welcome. People who wanna work on some open source. I probably won't need to do the PayPal webhooks because we're not synchronizing anything with PayPal. Good. Code QL analysis check. Tests and coverage check. This secondary code QL and code to see. We should be good on those as well. I think we'll have the green light. Ah. The coverage on my patch passes though, but the project wide coverage has decreased by half a percent. So I'm gonna merge. I could probably take a quick look. Do another commit anyway. Man. So PayPal constants. So yeah, let's go ahead and try to get this half percent. Ah, oh, I need to add that to the docs as well. Actually, no, it's a derived variable the paypal url paypal constants too many big lines subscription test weird i'm not pretty committed we're supposed to be doing this stuff Then, let's see if I can take a quick look at these tests. What's this? Import cycle. Ah, type inference. Interesting. Call 
Carp pie is the only one showing less will. All right. Class seems to handle a shopping cart stored in the user's session. It has basic functionalities like an initialization, saving, and clearing the cart. Here's a brief overview with each part does. In it initializes the cart by checking if a cart already exists in the session. If not, it creates an empty one. Save marks the session as modified, so it gets saved. Clear clears the cart by deleting it. Now our cart is over here. And we do have some tests. So I will say here's our test suite setup. Have the following test suite set up and would like to add a test for cart clear. Test cart clear. Cart initialize from self request. Add some thing. Make sure it's not empty and clear it. Interesting, let's see if this works. Ah, well, let's see, where was that? Cart test case. Add product, save cart, remove product, get product, subtotal, subtotal, shipping iteration, tear down. So right before the tear down, we'll add this. these linting changes real quick go back to my cart tests cart tests right here format pre-commit hooks we're running there all right so we're gonna run this test keep the database the test suite for the cart we do have an error I haven't cart object is no attribute add to cart okay that was a good guess and it should just be add to cart we'll delete that to cart part run the test suite again fail Okay, yeah. Assert cart equal, let's see here. Test clear cart. Right, it gets an ID. We have like a numeric ID, that's the interesting thing. Well, it's... And paste that there. It looks like the clear cart method didn't empty the cart as expected based on the test failure. The cart cart is still containing products after the clear method was called. You can make sure the clear method in your cart class actually implemented to empty the cart. In the cart, the clear method clears it from the session.
but doesn't remove the items from the cart. I could do something like this. It'll clear the session and itself, I suppose. Hmm, well, that won't work. Or it's just self core. So the other thing that's going on is I've got these pre-commits that are initializing. There they go. And they're going to run. This is why I was, was having problems with formatting on my CI pipeline is I didn't have my uh, pre-commit actions running. There we go. Constants. Uh, right there. Yeah, that'll catch this stuff for me automatically. Now, fix the cart. Add cart. Add test cart clear coverage. Ah. Yeah, so you're gonna get it'll fix it for me right there and just takes an extra moment, but then don't have to catch the lint in CI. Uh, so what we almost don't need now, at least from what I can tell, this code C code. This is a weird one. I wonder why. So we get it from the database and somehow the database, somehow the cart products could become uh, polluted. Like it seems this shouldn't happen. There shouldn't be, these shouldn't be out of sync. If I get cart products, we shouldn't have a product ID that's almost remove that line but I think it's preventing it might have been added here to prevent uh, this from having an error but yeah so we get the cart keys that's already by definition in the cart that's the only way that can happen I think I can remove that line oh wait just that though Yeah, I hope there wasn't some mysterious bug there that that line was preventing.
because this can't by definition return anything that's not in the product IDs, which are the cart keys. So this list would be complete. Every, every item in that list should match a key in this car copy. And then we're just attaching the actual product details to it and calculating the price. All right, cleanup has failed. If it's just code coverage and by a fraction of a percent, it's really unfortunate that we're hinging on that small of an amount of code coverage. Card is at 100% now. And honestly, I see a bunch of hundreds here. I, I don't understand. These are the patch level changes, you know. I think I've done due diligence on the code coverage, at least, yeah, for lines of code. And I think we have meaningful t tests as well. So I will go ahead. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to merge pull requests. Related to 906. I will do the donations in a separate pull request. This one's already really big. And it's been like a couple weeks I've been working on this, so I'm just pretty clear it's time to merge and face the consequences. I'm sure there will be some some issues, and we'll manually test this. So uh, I've got the automated tests. We're going to do manual tests mm. and open up any follow-up ta tasks. I'll continue working on the donations. So yeah, let's go for it. Merging. Confirm. All right. Yeah, about 4,000 lines removed, almost 2,000 added. It's a big pull request. There's a lot of uncertainty in, in a pull request of this magnitude. Uh, it's been under development for a while. I don't have any other manual testers aside from the editor of the magazine. So we will manually test the feature this week and the donations this week. Whew, wow. And this will have a little red, red X. I wonder if, yeah, how we can improve our test coverage. What are the areas that are lacking still? A lot of it is in these um, import scripts, which are actually no longer, almost no longer needed. We'll have to hold on to them for a while longer, but our test coverage will improve once we can deprecate that co code. It's 84% is not bad coverage. And a lot of it is this really complicated importer scripts that, um, have just gone gone through manual testing, a lot of manual testing and some automated testing. Very cool. All right, this has been another live code hangout, working on the Western Friend website. If you'd like to check out the source code, stop by github.com slash Western Friend, the WF website project. Got quite a lot of features that could be useful in something you're building. E-commerce being one of the main uh, features of this website. We've got a bookstore, 
magazine subscription interface with recurring subscription, payment processor integration, orders, and other features. So yeah, check it out. See if there's something that uh, would be useful in your project. Or you can stop by our issue queue and look for any of these help wanted issues. A lot of these are not urgent. Some of them are good first issues. Should be fairly straightforward to even uh, see if it's still valid. Some of them might not even be valid. And uh, it's a good way to contribute. And I'm available for mentorship and uh, helping steer any uh, development or answer any questions you might have. All right. Well, have a good day. I hope you're doing well. And see you around the community.